Hey guys, Ben Pollock here. One of the cool things about training at Unleashed Strength, which is my new gym, is that I have the opportunity to record more training footage that y'all really seem to enjoy. So recently, at one of my workouts last week, we recorded a full squat workout. So everything from warm up, actual squatting, assistance movements, cool down, the whole thing. I'm going to show, we're going to jump into the video in a minute and I'm going to talk you through everything I did, but I've also taken the opportunity to write up an article for Barben going everything in, going through everything in detail, hopefully with some tips that'll help you apply it to your own training. I really hope you enjoy it and I really hope you find it useful. If you do, please leave some feedback in the comments below so that I can continue and improve. If you don't like it, also let me know so that I can change things up. I do encourage you guys to check out Unleashed Strength, and also, because it is Black Friday, please check out my Black Friday sales, which are linked in the description below. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so I always start my workout off with three to five minutes of just real easy cardio. You can see I'm doing the assault bike, but I'm not actually going very hard. You know, I'm just trying to get a little bit of blood flowing, a little bit of sweat going. And I do some very easy light movements for my, for my joints. So here I'm hitting elbows, um, like hammer curls and resisted supination. I'm doing my shoulder joints. Even though this is a leg training day and I'm not putting anything that would, I'm not doing anything that would put my shoulders in adverse position, I still want to make sure to keep those areas loose. You can see I'm not too particular about range of motion. All I'm trying to do is get some nice, easy work for those for those areas, hamstrings, quads, all that stuff. Uh, the one movement I do want to call attention to is this one. This is my adductor exercise. I'm going to link to it in the description below. I think this is a fantastic movement for warming up your lower body. And then I, I talked in the last video about the benefits of training your calves before you squat or you deadlift to get some of that ankle mobility as well. So that's my warm up. My warm up takes about 10 minutes. It's really easy. Uh, I'm just getting a little bit of blood flow. Just really, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a warm-up. It is not a workout. And then I move on to my main movement for today. Today we're doing uh, pause safety bar squats with what's supposed to be a two-second pause in the in the hole. Um, and it's probably a little bit quicker than that. You always, It always feels longer than it is. I'm sure people are going to critique my depth. I am perfectly fine with this for an assistance movement for sets of high reps. Um, so, you know, I go by the 80-20 rule. If you're 80% of the way there, in your training, you're, you're perfectly fine. The, the people, I think, that insist on sticking with competition technique for every single set and rep are just holding themselves back because they simply can't train hard enough. And you can see, you know, my depth is not perfect on every rep, but for the most part, it's plenty fine. So I'm not, uh, I'm not too anal about any of that stuff. I warm up in plate jumps. Uh, you know, my working weight was planned to be somewhere between 550 and 600. So a real broad range, and that's because this is still really a new movement to me. I'm adding a lot of, uh, I'm increasing in strength very rapidly, and so it's hard to tell, okay, where exactly am I going to fall on any particular day. And so that's why I give myself such a wide range to work with. And until I get to about uh, two-thirds of my working weight, I just go up in plates. It's just easier that way. Uh, and then one last thing to mention is I'm, I'm just using the, the mono rogue attachments to start getting used to them. My next meet probably will be the Warriors Division of Big Dogs uh, next Halloween, October 31st, 2020. Uh, Big Dogs uses a monolith, so i got to start getting ready for that. And of course, representing my favorite apparel and, and gear company, Pioneer. Uh, I'm not really sponsored by them or anything, but Matt is a fantastic guy, and I really, I really encourage you guys to, to support them as well. Okay, so we're getting into the real work now. This is my first, what I call, ramp-up set. I like to do ramp-up sets to kind of feel out the weight. This is 500 pounds, uh, you know, so about 90% of my minimum for the day. And I'm just going to do a light triple here, see how it feels so I can gauge, you know, how, how heavy do I want to go on my working sets. And that, to me, that is perfect training depth right there. So very happy with, that's, that's pretty much a perfect set. That last one, I think my hips were... A teeny, teeny bit too far back, but not a big deal. Again, 80-20 rule. Felt good, so I take a fairly aggressive jump. We go to 540, I believe, um, which, you know, 40-pound jump, almost 10% when you're already close to your working weight. That's, that's pretty aggressive, and you can see I have to get my mind right for that. So before my heavy sets, I put on the music, I zone out, 
I just get focused on the work ahead and block everything else out. I think that's very important. That's made a huge difference in my performance learning to do that. So this is my last ramp up set. This is going to let me gauge, okay, what weight am I going to use for my working set? This one is a double. Whenever, I, whenever I'm doing set working sets over three, I like my ramp up sets to be triples or doubles. I never go to singles when I'm, when I'm doing high rep sets. I just don't see the point. Uh, and I think this one was a, a pretty good ramp up. It didn't feel quite as good as the last one for some reason. I was just slightly off balance. Uh, this was my first workout back in orthotics, which I used to squat uh, because I have very flat feet. They help tremendously, but between adding the orthotics, adding the monolith, a lot of little changes that made me feel just a little bit out of the groove. And as you can see, this is, this is some bullshit excuse. The sun was in my eyes, so it was a little bit harder to focus than I would have liked, but I was still happy with it. I decided to play conservative and go with uh, 570 for my working set of uh, e-repetitions. By the way, the reason I take my, uh, my shirt off for a lot of lifts, a lot of lower body lifts, my belt fits better without the shirt. The shirt slips around a little bit. Uh, you know, it's not as much problem in a singlet where it's a full one piece and it can't slip as much. But I find that when I have a separate shirt and pants, it, it's a little uncomfortable. So uh, there was nobody else in the gym. There was really nobody to... to uh, Admire my huge lats, which are not really all that huge, or at least not all that wide. Um, but that's why I do it. Those little things, I feel like, really do make a difference. So, I was pretty nervous here for this working set. Again, pretty heavy. This is a lifetime PR. Um, that said, I was pretty happy with it. I was way, way off balance for that first rep. I just lost the groove entirely, probably because of those nerves. Um, but it moved well, and I was able to correct after that. Um, and honestly, this set, uh, maybe a teensy bit higher than I would have liked, but not too bad. What I'm more concerned about is that thoracic rounding. I really don't like that look. I think I, uh, um, you'll see, I have linked in the description below an article on lumbar arching. And I think my lumbar is in a perfect position here, but my thoracic is rounded a little bit too much. I wish I had opened up the hips more on this set and kept it, uh, kept it a little cleaner. So... Uh, not not thrilled with that, but at the same time, heavyweight moved it, high reps. You can't read into that stuff too much, guys. It's just it'll drive you nuts. It will drive you nuts having been there. So I took this as a as a pretty damn good win. You can see I was I was hurting after <laughs> sets of eight paused on the safety bar, not fun, y'all. So then I had uh, I had two back off sets. Uh, the first I dropped back down to 540, which was my uh, my last ramp up. This one, I remember to open up my hips, so I was much, much, much happier with my positioning. And, you know, still still pretty good weight. 540, pause, 8. Not, not mad about that at all. Um, the, the big question will be, how does this transfer to my uh, straight bar squat? If it transfers as well or better than high bar squats, then I'm at all-time peak strength. If not, uh, then we'll have to do some more, some more thinking. But I was really happy. I think around rep three or four, my hips finally started to loosen up a bit. And I was, yeah, that's, that's a perfect rep right there. And from there on, I think the rest of the training, I was extraordinarily happy with that. But my hips were so tight at the beginning. I had the nerves going. It just, it was a little off, a little off the groove. So uh, overall, I was very, very happy with this. But obviously, there are always, always things to work on. I guess that's my point. For this right no matter how well a set goes and you can see i'm i'm uh i'm cheesing there i'm pretty happy with how that one went you know, because i could feel right as soon as those hips start to loosen up i can feel oh there's the there's that position in the hole that i want once that clicks that's that's a big win for me because the more i can do that the more i'm going to ingrain it in into my uh movement patterns you know become second nature and then the nerves won't matter but all those little things man you got to pay attention to as soon as you start to uh to phone in anything, no matter how light it may be, you're really just wasting your time. And if you're going to waste your time, uh, you know, you can waste your time doing easier stuff that's not going to get you injured, that's not going to, you know, make you feel like shit for the rest of the day, whatever the case may be. So I really encourage you guys to be pretty uh, pretty diligent about your training. This is my last back off set. I dropped all the way down to 500. It was super easy. I just wanted to make sure I got the work in because um, I was pretty fatigued at that point. And we've moved to a, Mike and I, Mike Tushar, my coach, we've moved to a uh, six day split where it's an upper lower split. So I'm training my lower body three times a week. I'm trying not to do too much, uh, to manage my fatigue on a, on a daily basis. You can read more about my approach to that and unfuck your program again, linked in the description below. But you know, the more frequency you have, the more you got to manage that intra-workout volume. Um, so I finished up with some, uh, 
Bulgarian split squats, you can see I was pretty fucking fried. Oh, and I did some single leg, uh, single leg curls there. Now these, I know it looks like a stupid ass. I'm just, you know, sitting there curling. These are actually really important. Uh, your hamstrings function differently when your hips are in extension versus flexion. So if you never do seated hamstring curls, you're never training your hamstrings in that position, it can lead to weaknesses that later lead to injuries. With the seated machine in particular, it's very easy to, uh, to target the high hamstrings, the glute hamstring tie-in, which is crucial off the floor in the deadlift and coming out of the hole in the squat. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, check out all the links below. Let me know if you have questions, feedback, comments, whatever. And no matter what, keep on thinking strong and training hard.